Hi everybody, Andrea here. So I've been a dental professional for 19 years now and I want to talk about the more common dental procedure appointments that you're likely going to be booking as a dental receptionist. Now, keep in mind every office is different. If you work for an orthodontic office, you will have different procedures than if you work for a children's dentist, than if you work for a general dentist. So this is more for a general dental office. Some of the procedures that you're going to come across. I want to talk about them a little bit more. You have this study guide inside your course so definitely have a look where I go through the more common dental procedures I go through what it is kind of what's going to be done at that appointment and how much time it typically takes so this is a very popular question especially by new dental receptionists who are just getting started you're nervous about booking appointments for the first time what if somebody calls and says they have a crown appointment that they need to book you look in their chart you look in the treatment plan and go yes they have a crown appointment their first molar the upper left side what do i do who do i book it with how much time how many appointments don't worry, I can help you. And I have a little graphic at the end here inside your study guide that kind of goes through some of the harder ones. Like, well, not the harder ones, but as an example, you need to know the difference between a dental crown right here, the upper left-hand side, um, the upper right-hand side, depending on what you're looking at, um, um, and then the difference between a dental veneer, x-ray. So don't worry, we're going to talk about that. So let me just take that off here so you guys can see me. So Basically, actually, I'm going to open up that file in the background here just so I don't forget any procedures. I started off as a dental receptionist. I remember being nervous, anxious. That was the hardest part was booking appointments. I was afraid to answer the phone because I'm like, what if somebody needs an appointment booked? Like, I'm scared. You know, what do I do? It will it will get easier if you're working for a dental office with multiple dentists. Another thing you have to think about is every dentist is different. For example, when I started as a dental receptionist, I had a little cheat sheet by my desk because for dentist A, for a one surface occlusal filling for one tooth, he would always book 20 minutes no matter what. But then dentist B, she would say, well, I prefer 30 minutes because I like to do a dental checkup at the same time. If I find another cavity, I'm going to fix it that day. So give me 30 minutes for a one surface, one tooth occlusal filling. And then what if you find you're booking a patient for an MOD amalgam filling? Well, for this dentist, they might book 60 minutes or they might book 80 minutes or they might book, you know, so every dentist is different. Hopefully the office where you're going to work at, they're going to give you a similar cheat sheet because truly every dentist is different. I can't say that enough. I've worked in multiple offices. So I'd say fillings is the best example. Um, even when you're looking at crowns and bridges, it's the same thing. Some dentists might do a one crown in two appointments because you might have a machine in your dental office that actually makes the crowns for you there. But a lot of offices, they have to send those impressions off to a lab to have it made. So then a crown appointment is not just going to take one appointment. It's going to take two appointments or it might even take three. If the, if the dentist likes the patient to come in two weeks later just to check things, adjust the bite, things like that so inside that study guide I say kind of how how many appointments are typically needed and for how much time for a crown appointment typically you would book in one hour appointments for each appointment if it's just a simple check checking the bite that might be 20 minutes so that might not be of course the full hour but if they plan to do the one crown from start to finish that could even be half a day booked so for four hours so it really depends on what your office has what about for a dental checkup and cleaning so booking a teeth cleaning with a dental hygienist is typically one hour but I've had dental offices book 45 minutes. If it's a child, it might be 30 minutes, but I've had other offices book the full hour because that might include x-rays, that might include a dental checkup. Sometimes for a teeth cleaning appointment, the dentist will not be coming in to check because maybe they're just in for their perio appointment or their scaling appointment. So that would be different times altogether. A rule of thumb, what I like to say, because I am now a dental hygienist myself, I book everybody in for one hour. For children, I do do 30 minutes, but I'm usually behind talking to them or something. So 45 minutes is nice to have, or maybe 40 minutes. 
Another thing to keep in mind is some dental offices book in 15 minute intervals, some book in 10 minute intervals. So you would not be able to say from 11 to 1140 if it's 15 minute intervals, you would have to say 11 to 1145 because that's every 15 minutes. Or if it was 10 minute intervals, you couldn't say from 11 to 1145 because that would be 15 minutes, right? So you would have to kind of adjust things accordingly. So it's good to know if your office does 10 minutes or 15 minutes. What about dental x-rays? So typically I find dental x-rays aren't booked just one appointment. Like you won't have a patient call in and say, I need x-rays. Typically you would need to book in a dental exam with that because you can't just take x-rays and then have nobody look at it. So a dental exam and x-ray appointment could be 20 minutes or it could be 30 minutes. I find 20 minutes is a good rule of thumb, but the thing you have to consider is let's say the patient's behind or let's say you're behind 10 minutes. Well, 10 minutes into a 20 minute appointment means only 10 minutes. So you're going to be behind for sure even more. So a lot of offices like to book 30 minutes just to allow themselves some buffer time. That would be for a dental checkup and x-rays. If you're taking one x-ray, let's say they're booking in an emergency exam, their right tooth hurts, their upper right tooth hurts. Well, you're not going to think you're going to be taking a full mouth series. So a bunch of x-rays, you might be taking one or two x-rays so that time is going to change you know you might only need to book 20 minutes or 30 minutes or let's say the patient calls in and they don't know what tooth hurts it just hurts everywhere they don't know what's going on you don't know if you'll be taking x-rays you don't know if you'll be checking the tooth to see if it's alive maybe it's dead so you have to pull out a couple other testings you don't know what's happening or maybe you check the chart and they've had a treatment plan where they've had two teeth with big holes in them they have cavities so the dentist might even want to fix it that day. So sometimes I find when a patient calls in for an emergency exam, if your office does this, it's good to check with the dentist and say, hey, listen, this patient has had two cavities diagnosed. It says here 60 minutes to fix the cavities because they were diagnosed at another appointment. The patient's calling in, they make it sound like it's the lower left-hand side and that's where the cavities were. So I suspect that's the problem. Do you want to book the patient in to fix those cavities for 60 minutes? Or do you want to book them in for an emergency exam for 30 minutes, take the x-rays and have them come back another day, even though you're pretty sure this is the issue, but the dentist might not have time. Let's say for an emergency exam, they want to get the patient in because the patient's in pain. Maybe they need painkillers. Maybe they need antibiotics because ibuprofen or other meds that they can take at home just aren't cutting it. Maybe the dentist doesn't have a 60 minute appointment for a month. So you would want to get the patient in for just an emergency appointment, have it looked at, give them their painkillers or whatever they need, and then book them back. So talk to the dentist. There might be different policies in place, but these are kind of different things to think about, right? Sometimes it's not always so cut and dry. Now, what about filling? So I talked about fillings a little bit. There's amalgam fillings, there's composite fillings, there's even inlays and onlays in some offices. Depending on what type of filling is going to be placed, this will determine how much time and depending on how many teeth are going to be involved. Um, a good rule of thumb for one tooth, it's going to take 30 minutes. For two teeth, another 10 minutes. Three teeth, another 10 minutes on top of that but every office is different. I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. So hopefully they will give you some kind of a cheat sheet of if four teeth need a, need a filling, book this much time. If two teeth need a filling, book this much time. I've even known some offices where for every filling appointment, the receptionist needs to go back to ask the dentist how long they should book because they just don't know because it really does vary. Um, what about root canals? So if a root canal is needed, this depends on the tooth as well. The Is it going to be complicated? Is it not complicated? Typically, it's two appointments where they're going to clean out the tooth in the first appointment. The second appointment, they're cleaning out, or sorry, cleaning out the nerve, I should say. The second appointment, they're cleaning out the nerve even more and then placing a crown or sometimes even three appointments because the second appointment is they're cleaning out the nerve. The third appointment, and then putting on a temporary, sorry, and then the third appointment is they're taking off the temporary, cleaning out the nerve, and then putting a crown on top. So it could be two or three appointments. Check with the dentist to see how they do it. But typically, it's going to be one hour or more, one hour and a half even, per appointment. A lot of den uh, dental offices refer out for root canal treatment just because it's very tedious. Not all offices do it, so check to see if your office does it. 
Um, what about tooth extraction? So taking out teeth, this really does depend if the tooth is complicated or not. If the dentist feels like when they're taking out the tooth, um, the bone or the root, I should say, is going to break or the tooth is going to break, then that makes it more complicated. Are they going to need to perform like a mini surgery to get it out? This really depends and it can vary from 30 minutes to three hours. So double check with the dentist how many teeth, what teeth are being extracted, things like that. Dental implants aren't typically done in all dental offices. Some dental offices will do part of the implant, meaning they might send you away or send the patient away to do that screw type into the bone. And then once that is done at the other office, the oral surgeon's office, that they might send the patient back to your dentist to put the crown on the screw or dental offices do all of the appointments, the full implant in one, because typically for implants, there's going to be a, be a healing period. So the screw might be placed. Two months later, they come back to check the screw. It might need to be tightened. A few months later, they come back to check it. All looks good. Then they start preparing for the crown. It's really hard to say with implants as well. I know a lot of offices don't even do them. They just simply refer out. So if you don't do them, you don't have to worry about booking the appointments. What about braces? So orthodontic treatment, that would be specific to an orthodontics office. Some offices, some dentists are trained in ortho a little bit. Um, so they might be doing certain ortho types or certain appliance. This really does vary because for any appliance, you're going to need impressions. Impressions, let's say alginate impressions, typically take 30 minutes, uh, 10 to 30 minutes, depending. If it's a final impression done by the dentist, this, this could take 10 to 20 to 30 minutes as well. Depends on the type of appliance or if they're having braces done, this will be done at another office or in your office with the orthodontist. It just depends on how your office is set up, but it could be 10 minutes. It could be 20 minutes. It could be an hour per appointment, depending on what is done. Dentures is kind of the same. I find certain offices specialize in dentures and refer out. It depends on what they need. Are they starting from scratch where you need to take out all of their teeth? So that's an extraction appointment and then come back for impressions. And then another appointment is to come back for more impressions and then the dentures are being placed, but then you have to adjust them. So there could be several appointments involved. Even for me, I was never really involved with the denture appointments because they were typically being referred out. Maybe when I was a dental assistant a little bit more, but it really depends on the patient to see what they need. Are they getting complete dentures? Are they getting full dentures? Are the dentures being relined? things like that. And teeth whitening, not all offices do that either, but typically a one hour appointment, the shortest appointment could be 30 minutes or it could be two hours. Are you giving them trays to take home where you're going to be explaining that? Is it just a professional in-office treatment? Many different teeth whitening options. What about talking veneers? Some offices do veneers and some do not. Um, I find veneers aren't as popular as they used to be, but it depends on where you live. They're similar to a crown and bridge where it's going to take one hour per appointment. Typically the first appointment is prepping the tooth. The second is kind of re-prepping it to make sure that everything looks good and then placing the final veneer because veneers are made in the lab. But what if the shade isn't quite right? You'll need to send it back to the lab and have it redone. So then another temporary veneer or veneers is being placed. Um, periodontal treatment, that's just another form of teeth cleaning. If a patient's coming in every three months, for their deep cleanings, it could be 60 minutes, it could be 90 minutes. They might even go to a different office for their perio treatments, but then still see you for the regular dental hygiene cleanings in their exam every six months. Oral surgery, similar to tooth extractions, it depends what surgery they're having to know how much time needs to be booked. Um, cosmetic dentistry, last but not least, that could be anything. It could be crowns and bridges. It could be veneers. You could be working on the patient's entire smile. So they'll be coming back for several appointments because first maybe they're getting ortho and then they're getting teeth whitening and then they're fixing the cavities. And then, you know, you just never know. So there's a lot of different procedures that require a different amount of time. It takes practice to kind of memorize all of them. You'll have patients who come in and they will say to you, hi, I'm Andrea. I was supposed to book a root 
retinal appointment, I think. And then you look in their chart and it was actually a crown appointment. So they thought it was a root canal, but it was a crown. So patients might get confused sometimes. It's always good to check the chart. And it's also always good to know what they're talking about and also know how to explain things. You might have patients come up to you saying, so the dentist told me I need a crown, but I don't really get it. Can you explain it to me? you'll be able to say, well, a crown is because in this tooth, you have a deep cavity. We could do a filling, but a crown is the better option because it goes over the entire tooth, no chance of chipping or breaking. So this is why the dentist wants to do a crown for you. But if you if, if you didn't know that and the patient said, so I need to book a crown, but I, I don't get it. And then you had said, I don't really know what a crown is either, but I can go find out for you. So that's just taking extra time when you have to leave the desk, go find out things that you should be learning before, and then you'll be able to answer these questions and then you'll be seen as a really good dental receptionist. So let me know you guys, if you had any questions, this was just kind of a quick overview. I do have a full course for dental receptionists, learning all the ins and outs, what you have to know to work in a dental office to be the best dental receptionist ever. So like this video, if you like it, share this with anybody who you think it's going to help them and reach out to me anytime. I will leave the course link down below if you like in this video. I will leave that in the video description. Um, if you want to take the full dental receptions course, if this was helpful. So thank you guys and I'll see you very soon. So are you thinking about becoming a mobile dental hygienist? Meaning you're not going to work for a dentist anymore. You're not going to purchase your own standalone practice like a physical location, but you're either going to see patients in your own home or you can see patients in mine.